It's storm season, but our travel goes on. And with PAL tickets on sale, this time we're going on another vacation. Yup, we're traveling during wet season, flying all the way to Coron. It's another one off the bucket list as we get to visit another Philippine island paradise. So stick around as we explore what's around town, all the way from dining to island hopping and with new friends joining in. Keep it here in Airline Travel and Airports. And we're back at the airport to do another trip. With travel buddy Alex Luis Anderson Cruz accompanying me, we find ourselves at Terminal 2 to check in for today's flight. It's known that travel to the popular resort island of Coron can be very expensive, but we got our tickets at a very low price. The catch? We're flying during monsoon season, a time when storm and heavy rain doesn't come as a surprise. But with fares sold really low, we just decided to give it a go, being called to board after a slight delay and hoping our ride won't get too bumpy during our flight today. So off we go to our boarding gate, where we didn't have to wait as our shuttle bus has been there all along waiting for us to hop on which will take us on what I consider a quick joyride. Along the way, we're treated to a good view of planes as well as what's happening at the ramp as we move along towards our assigned aircraft. Now for our Manila to Buswanga route, we're using PAL Express's Dash 8, a turboprop that can seat up to about 86 of us passengers. PAL deploys its Dash 8 400 next generation aircraft on short haul flights. And no matter how small the plane is, compared to the rest of the company's fleet, it's still able to provide balance between passenger comfort, performance, and operational flexibility. Powered by two Pratt & Whitney 150A engines, I'm sure you'd feel the thrill as this plane speeds up during takeoff. Restless from my seat, I visit the back, where the rear and only galley is at. And no, the one and only lavatory is located way up front. It's a small aircraft and not much to explore. So back to my seat I go as I sense that the rest of the passengers have boarded and pushback will begin real soon. You know me, I usually sit at the back of the plane, but in cases like turboprops, I prefer to sit next to where the plane's propeller is at. My tip, if you want an unobstructed view of the window aboard this Q400, you might want to sit way at the back, or way up front. In my case, I'm seated at row 6A, a little bit ahead of those giant blades as I'd be needing to get a good view later as our plane approaches Buswanga. And not too long since I got to my window seat, the aircraft door is closed and pushback was initiated. Safety demo was then performed by a crew member, and before we knew it, our plane was moving towards the runway on damp weather, giving us a hint that our ride might get bumpy as we fly out of Manila all the way to Buswanga. Surprisingly, there wasn't much turbulence as our plane continued to climb. Although there were occasional instances that our aircraft got a bit shaky, things were calm as we continued to ascend. Simple snacks were served minutes after takeoff in the form of bottled water and cookies. And the oranges and canned drinks? Oh, they were given by staff from the lounge. It sure pays to be friendly. Meanwhile, flight's taking us about an hour, and before we knew it, paradise is seen from above. With crystal blue waters and scenic view of the islands seen from both sides of the plane, I can't help move from one seat to another just to capture the magic. This is what I've been telling my friends about. Go out of the city and explore the country. There's just plenty of magnificent sights like this to see. As we're starting to get awed by what we are seeing, we're coming in for landing. Well, flight is over and it's time to disembark. Most often than not, there's a bit of chit-chat between me and the crew members before we go. And like my travel buddy Anderson, I'm just as excited and eager to step off the plane as this is the first time we're setting foot in Buswanga. And though we left Manila with rain and all, surprisingly, sun was shining upon us as we got out of the plane and moved towards the terminal. With the cool wind, sunshine, and the fresh morning air, we're convinced we're now away from the chaos of city life and can now start calling this a vacation. Buswanga's Francisco B. Reyes may be a small airport, but it's neat and has friendly airport staff nonetheless. In our first task upon arrival, register in one of the desks as visitors to the island where staff are more than helpful and accommodating in assisting us. Soon after, we're off to the baggage carousel to collect our luggage. We're only a few steps away, we're exiting the airport, but not before we needed to line up to another desk to shell out a few bucks as every visitor is required to pay for environmental fees. With 200 pesos as our first expenditure on the island, we finally went on our way to where all those minivans await that would take them to different parts of northern Palawan. 
In our case, we're headed to the town of Koron to where our accommodation is at. And with it, it's gonna be a 40 minute ride where we're charged about 250 pesos per person in this minivan. It's just gonna be a company of four people on this transfer, five including the driver. And with all our bags loaded and still high on travel mode, our awesome trip to the town of Koron begins, meeting new friends while on the road. We have new friends. She's from Sweden. Dali, Dali, from Israel. Oh, Israel? Okay. Okay. Uh, no. okay. My name is Matilda from France. Or Sweden, both. Oh, okay. I'm a <laughs> Oh, okay. She's been around. Yeah. He's from Israel. Hello. Exchanging travel stories with fellow travelers sure made our trip seem quick that we got to our hotel before we knew it. We're staying at budget friendly Casa Coron meet hotel where for a few days will serve as our accommodation. Since we had a very early flight, we're catching a few hours sleep before exploring what's around the area later on. Now after that power nap, we're up and about, finding plenty of bars, restaurants, and shops in the area to check out. And some of the things we plan on buying are stuff we'd be needing for next day's island hopping. Fortunately, our hotel is located along Calle Real, where convenience stores and souvenir shops are just within reach. Things are a bit pricey though, so all we can do for now is get what's important and simply go. By the way, at this time of the year, weather can be unpredictable. Having sunny skies, then some occasional rain, and back to having sunshine. And after having our frequently interrupted walking, it's about time we look for something fancy to dine. Choosing between Filipino dish and European, we ended up in a bistro called Amihan, where upon stepping in, we were amazed that it served authentic French cuisine. Well, we don't get to try these every day, so we went ahead and ordered away. Like most restaurants here, it sure is pricey, but the flavors are way worth it. So, bon appétit! In the evening, we booked our island hopping tour, along with newfound friend Matilda, who we brought along on a joyride for a little adventure, exploring the streets of Coron's town proper before having our dinner. And for icebreaker, we had a crash course in speaking French. Now here's how it went. Like you need to say like if you were in like a normal sentence like blah blah my blah 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 Just say fromage. Just say cheese then. Though we had difficulty in pronouncing the words right, Matilda's French lessons were reciprocated by showing her exotic street food sold that night. Hesitant over what seemed to be strange delicacies, we ended up in a bar called Sharky's. And instead of having a few drinks, we decided to go for something ice cold. And good thing Matilda found the right place, where the local treat called Halo Halo is sold. New to Matilda's palate, we ordered them right away. Now I'd say, that's one sweet way to conclude the day. The next morning, we're all set to go island hopping, with our tour guide giving participants a quick briefing. One of his tips, if you don't have any snorkeling gear, there's no other place to rent them but here. No swimming supplies for rent to the islands you'll be visiting, so I'm getting a mask for use during swimming. Anyhow, island hopping tours here could go as slow as 1,500 pesos per person. It gets more expensive the more activities you'd want to do and additional islands you want to visit. In our case, we got the ultimate tour costing 1,800 pesos, which I think should be enough to see the highlights of this trip. I admit, visiting Coron can be quite expensive, but this is one place in the Philippines that I've always wanted to visit. So away with the costs for now, this is one trip off my bucket list. And with our pump boat moving, our island hopping tour finally begins. Before getting to one of the islands, we make a short stop. It seems we can't get there just yet, till some of the boats there leave. And while waiting, we get to our first activity, swimming somewhere in the middle of the sea.
After about half an hour of taking a dip, we're up and going for another trip. This time getting increasingly awestruck as we see more and more huge formations of rocks towering over crystal blue waters. We're simply amazed what nature here had to offer. Finally reaching land, we're taking a tour of Kayangan Lake, where climbing up to the top can be quite tiring just to savor spectacular views all worth seeing. Now getting up here can sure be a challenge, but once you reach it, the scenery here is just breathtaking. Meanwhile, as tourists go crazy taking their selfies, Anderson and I decided to get busy checking out entrances to caves nearby before eventually moving on a few steps down to see one of the highlights of Koron. So viewers, this is Kayangan Lake, also a popular spot for bloggers and photographers for obvious reasons. It's rainy season, so water here can get a bit murky, but can get pristine on days it's sunny. Well, time to enjoy the place. Besides, this is what we came here for. So regardless of the weather, off we go into the water. With my friend Matilda having a grand time swimming, and Anderson trying to float behind with all those splashing, these are times where we can simply chill and just be, while enjoying nature and its surroundings. She's but good in swimming. Just rain water. But I don't understand like where the water, the water comes from. Uh, whenever we got like storms or rain season, it gets filled up. You know, it doesn't evaporate that fast. It just gets stored here. So this is just rainwater. Suppose rainwater. Amazed. Matilda is curious how water even filled this place. But before I can finish my answer, she's off diving to see the rock formations beneath the surface. So first I have to see if you don't have any like drifts under your feet. So you do like this. That was perfect. So you do like this. There she goes. <laughs> 9.9. .9. <laughs> After about an hour, we've been called to go back to our pump boat, but not before getting some snacks in these stores with our legs submerged in the water. Not your typical convenience store, and shortly after that, we're setting off to visit another island so we can explore some more. Our boat rides in this tour seemed endless, and time sure seems slow. All we can do for now is hang out on the side of the boat and take lots of souvenir photos of our trip, knowing there are still plenty of stops to go. After another stop in another island, it was time to have a hearty lunch of fresh seafood together with fellow tourists. And soon after that, you guessed it, we were at it again, setting off to another destination where this time, we're somewhere snorkeling to see some shipwrecks. This is one place where you're definitely gonna need your diving mask to appreciate the real beauty of what's under the sea. Unable to bring your own mask? It's alright, there's still lots of stuff to do. For after lunch activity, nope, we're not having dessert. Instead. With lots of fishes around us, there's simply plenty of them to be fed. Did you feel that? <laughs> okay, now I'm, I'm going to need the goggles just to see you want mine? if. Yeah, and I'll this one. It sure is fun as food definitely calls their attention, but then again, you just can't feed the entire population. If there's one thing that'll get you preoccupied other than swimming, it's definitely fish feeding. Next stop, Barracuda Lake. And talking about lakes, I'm sure this involves some climbing, the way we did on all other islands with lakes that we went to. Glad to have been wearing my aqua shoes, the steps can be quite slippery, but once you get there, you're sure to appreciate one of Koron's gems, a body of water situated in a former crater. 
but don't get scared because of its theme. Though it's a spectacular diving spot, I didn't see any barracudas. With its clear brackish water, with unspoiled surroundings such as this, it's an experience you sure don't want to miss. Hello, you Hey, Mick. Uh, so, yung tubig dito, brackish water. Medyo maalat na hindi. So, yun. Uh, ito yung last tour natin. Uh, tapos, pahing na tayo. Then, the next few days, libo-libo na tayo sa, ano, sa Koron. Okay. And just as I thought that was the last leg of our tour, there are still more enchanting islands we went to. Our boat rides to stunning places just seemed endless. For an ultimate tour package, we were given a breathtaking glimpse that there are still wonderful places in the Philippines that define nature's beauty as well as serenity. With the remaining time we had, we were taken to more destinations like the Twin Lagoons, Balinsasayo Reef, Twin Peaks Coral Garden, and I forgot the rest. But this short adventure on this side of the Philippines is simply one of the best. For every towering limestone and rock formation, I've never felt so captivated of nature's glory and I can personally reflect that I didn't make a mistake in taking this journey. Experiencing all the turquoise water, limestone cliffs, and hidden lagoons, the atmosphere was just magic. I can say that spending some time here was all worth it. Along with travel buddies Matilda and Anderson, this is Mitch Young inviting you to at least once in your lifetime do visit paradise on this side of the Philippines. Hoping one of these days, you find yourself in Toronto.